this is a small piece, all right? So we're trying to cook it as if it was, as it were a normal piece of meat. So because it's very thin, we are going to give the, uh, we're turning it around. Good. Yeah? What do you think? <laughs> so we are trying to get also some uh, fats so that it has this uh, similar to a Maillard fat. In fact, we are choosing the polysaccharides, which means uh, we are choosing the carbohydrates so that it really can resemble better the way you would cook a normal piece of meat. All right, so uh, what we have put here is just uh, oil. If you don't mind, I will put some uh, spice here. This is barbecue spice, of course. Uh, we are trying to use all uh, plant-based ingredients, right? So everything here is uh, plant-based. We got also some uh, barbecue sauce, but this is also, we made sure it's a uh, vegan uh, ingredients only. Right, so we check the other side. This is a small piece, and then uh, we're trying to cut it, and we see uh, what uh, we believe is uh, the, the texture of a piece mm -hmm. of a whole muscle cut. Um, so the novelty is that in the, in the field, there is many processed meat uh, replacements. You know, there is many big companies like um, uh, Beyond Meat, Impossible uh, Burgers. There is many new, um, new burgers that are coming out, and new uh, hot dogs and new meatballs. What is uh, needed is uh, an alternative to whole muscle cut. So, for example, a beef stick or a, a pork replacement. Um, so what uh, then we try to do as well, we are trying to mimic not only meat, but we will also try to mimic uh, seafood, right? So in the future, uh, because um, there is uh, some, some alternative uh, seafood that is very difficult to imitate. We are trying to mimic, for example, salmon, but this is our future project, we didn't start on it yet, we have the advantage of being quite um, um, customizable, right? So we work with capsules and we are able to um, use the different mixtures and these mixtures are composed uh, always of uh, plant-based ingredients or algae-based ingredients. Is uh, we have been uh, trying to uh, we have it's kind of the same taste as the meat and then the same taste as the fish. Yeah, this or algae-based ingredients or fungi-based or it can be bacteria fermentation. So, so for each one, you try to approach kind of the same taste as the meat and then the same taste as the fish. Yeah, this is correct. In this particular version, what we have done is uh, we have been uh, trying to uh, we have been trying to. Uh, replicate the appearance and the texture of a beef stick. Okay. And now we are working uh, our that the most difficult part uh, was to try to create something that had the texture and appearance and the taste was uh, a little bit, uh, um, well, easier for them to provide us the ingredients, right? Mm -hmm. So in the next stage, before uh, summer, we are creating the new version, which has also um, the flavor, right? Um, so at the end, we want to have texture, appearance, nutritional properties, and taste in the same product. And we thought that these four parameters together are the ones that, uh, um, the ones that uh, replicate uh, meat in our uh, sensorial experience. Then it's much more complex, each one of these parameters. So now, if you don't mind, I will uh, switch these on. Mm -hmm. and and we extrude this material uh, through the nozzle. What we try to replicate here is uh, a micro-extrusion technology. So if you can pass me a, so a paper, we make sure that this is uh, on the right positioning. We will calibrate the machine. It takes uh, 30 seconds around normally, so we make sure that uh, uh, this is going uh, forward at the right speed and flow options of the machine, and then we print the capsules. So let me calibrate this. 
I put this in auto home, which means it goes home. Now we check that the fi filament will come out, so we can uh, check how they replicate uh, the micro um, filament that are actually trying to replicate the uh, fi muscular fibers in meat. All right, so now we will extrude the material. It yes. makes individual pieces like this? We can make also two pieces at a time or many at a time. This is our first prototype and this has uh, small capsules, as you can see, while the new versions um, that we are creating have bigger capsules, which means that we are trying to replicate bigger pieces, right? Uh, so this is uh, around 80 grams, for example, which will be a course that is uh, quite more uh, uh, typical, right? When you're trying to replicate beef. So as you can see here, this is a filament, all right? And this filament is done in a way so that it has uh, um, a diameter in around 400 micrometers each one of that, which means it's less than one millimeter. And what it tries to replicate is these muscular fibers, right? So let me check now if the, um, the machine is calibrated and we start printing in a second. So we move the axis, make sure we don't, uh, we don't touch the base. All right, so now we can start printing because the machine looks uh, ready. So we go home again and we select the, we select the code that goes from a, a, a model, a three-dimensional model, which is an abstract thing. It goes into information that the machine will translate into the piece, all right? So now we can use uh, what we call code number 20, which is this, uh, this um, particular case. So let me see. Now we'll uh, select the speed and, uh, and flow which are around the speed of uh, movement can be selected here. So I'm going faster with the speed and I'm going also uh, faster with the pushing. So if uh, you can check here if uh, the machine prints uh, correctly the first layer and now we are going to print so now, Joan, can you maybe uh, join me and uh, make sure this works? So at the same time, we cut this. Uh, we cut this and we try this at the same time while this is printing. So if you want to come here, um, we are going to cut this while Joan uh, makes the first layers. This is coming uh, layer by layer, which means uh, we are trying to use uh, 3D printing here with this model. But actually, uh, for scaling this up, we need to scale this uh, producing many kilos at a time which means we want to uh, create uh, 3D printing here with this model, but actually uh, for scaling this up, we need to scale this uh, producing many kilos at a time, which means we want to uh, create 50 kilos per hour with a bigger machine, which is not looking like a printer, uh, but is looking instead like an extruder, right? So let's uh, go forward on trying this while we print the new piece. Our CTO is making sure that uh, this uh, uh, is uh, going to be printed uh, in around 15 minutes so that we can try this uh, at the same time. I know you already spoke about the nutritional properties. Do you guys also add any vitamins or anything additional that you know vegans or plant-based people would be lacking? Um, yes. Like vitamin B12, vitamin D, iron. Is yes. there anything added to this? This is correct. So in, as I said, this version is uh, trying to replicate the appearance and the texture. So we didn't incorporate yet some uh, factors that are very important in a balanced diet if you're trying to do, uh, for example, a vegan option, which means I'm uh, trying to make sure, especially as you said, um, iron and B12. Normally, this compound are put already in some cereals uh, for uh, breakfast. So as you know, even animals now, because of intensive farming, in some cases, they need to addition that to the animals. Um, what is uh, the novelty here is we can create something which is new. So do you want to try to cut and see that it doesn't look like, uh, well, we believe it doesn't look like, a, like a ground meat, but it looks like a fibrous meat instead. Looks like a plastic. And what's the difference between this one and that one? Because they look different. Yes. difference between this one and that one because they look different yes this is another model uh, as you see we cut this before and we have uh, cooked this before so we calibrated the machine because uh, we came here and we 
created the piece. Uh, this has already been uh, cooked, and this one is the new one that we have already done. Um, so the texture is a bit different, as you as you might see. And now, if you want, I'm trying this. Uh, I'm trying this first. Want to make sure. Hmm. This version, you can try. We put uh, we put very very little oil. This one is the one which is very um, with a quantity of oil inside, which is uh, very little, which means it's very dry. So in the next version that we are uh, doing now, mm -hmm. this one has a fat encapsulated. It actually oh. tastes like meat. Well, it tastes this one but like a first trial. It. Yeah, it has. Like, yeah. We believe it's uh, the first trial because we're starting now to talk with the um, with the providers that really give the ingredients to the uh, plant-based sector when they're trying to do meat alternatives. Mm -hmm. So we believe that trying to incorporate these ingredients now will be not, not so, <coughs> so difficult. We hope. There's some water. So now I think that uh, we will uh, make sure this works and uh, we can, uh, we can uh, do another piece. What is the difference here is that we can check the... Um, can check the mixture, and we see that the mixture is very different from <coughs> the actual stick. The question here is, as soon as it stops printing, can we cook it? Yes. Yeah, we will detach it first. So um, we will detach it first, and then uh, we cook it. Okay. Right? So now we can, uh, of course, uh, um, add spices afterwards and uh, make it always looking better. So as you know that you are in a cooking school here, it's much easier. Uh, I have a question as well. Um, you said with the texture, it, I mean, it's always kind of the same. So will it get to a certain point, like for example, meat and fish, when it can get to like, I don't know, rare or medium rare or not just the same texture throughout the whole thing? Um, yeah, we can have different extruders so that we have one part which is more similar to um, the muscle part and one part which is more similar to the, the fat part. For example, okay. if you want to replicate in the future Kobe beef, right? Mm -hmm. So this special meat from uh, Japan, as you know. Um, these have the, the fat ordered in a different way inside um, the piece. So you, we can try to replicate, uh, for example, some parts of the, of the tissue that are more muscular and alternate this with, for example, some parts that are completely uh, focused on fat, which means trying to replicate this, uh, um, this Kobe beef, uh, for example, in the future. Uh, we can also add something uh, new, for example, our omega-3s, right? Mm -hmm. Like if it was a uh, super meat, something new, that uh, not only you can try to select so that it doesn't have any cholesterol, it's also, um, well, uh, compared to traditional uh, farming, you want to make sure here, for sure, you don't have any antibiotics, for sure, uh, even if uh, you compare with uh, uh, red meat, for sure, this is not carcinogenic in terms of uh, uh, colon cancer that has been studied in some kinds of red meat, if you... Um, if you eat too much um, of that. And also, you can incorporate new things like omega 3s, for example, fatty acids, which you can find in uh, fishes um, and in some algae, but you cannot find normally in meat. So the future is looking like more uh, customized, is personalized, and we believe that we will start with um, top chefs uh, collaborating and having them as lead. Uh, customized, is personalized, and we believe that we will start with um, top chefs uh, collaborating and having them as lead users so that they can help us develop new things. We have an, uh, a range of texture in terms of uh, tensile resistance, compression, and chewiness so that, uh, um, so that we can now try to cut this, and you will see this one. Um, if you have a knife here, uh, yes, this one uh, has been uh, prepared before, and so in some cases you can also cook. As you can see here, we have done this version uh, with a bigger thickness, and if you cut here, uh, you can see that it is very, very fibrous. All right? It's juicy too. So, yeah, it's uh, kind of juicy because in this particular version, we have added um, some fat inside, um, and the fat is uh, trying to, um, it's been uh, added so that uh, it can stay during the cooking process and it doesn't uh, uh, flow away, right? 
So the real novelty here, if you want to try, uh, you can do it on top of the, of the dish here. Try to cut it and you see that uh, even by hand, uh, if you want, and then we can give you a, a piece of paper so that uh, she can clean uh, her hands. Right, so we can control the chewiness, and um, we are trying to control the texture in terms of uh, tensile resistance, compression, thank you. Do you want one of yeah. as well? Compression resistance uh, so that uh, it can replicate different parts of uh, the muscle. So we, for example, studied in literature which are the muscles of cow that we can replicate. Uh, because we have a range of textures and we made sure that, for example, rabbit meat and uh, we can um, try to be in the same range of uh, lamb meat. Um, of course, we tried already only with this uh, particular prototype, which was a uh, beef stick, because we thought that uh, the beef stick was uh, the holy grail in when you try to the transition from uh, plant-based ground meat to actual whole muscle cuts. So uh, a muscle left is as if it was uh, where a normal uh, muscle taken from, uh, from a cow, right? Um, we also have um, new projects in which we study, for example, cultured meat, and we have a collaboration now ongoing where we are starting to uh, do meat in the lab instead. But this is not the case. Uh, this so we'll is a be able to take cultured meat and do the same extrusion? Yes, we can adapt so that we can have um, a technology that is completely plant-based and it's, it's already approved for the European market, while the cultured meat is a new project where we can... Uh, work on that, but the regulatory uh, agencies around the world don't allow this uh, to go on the market yet, of course, because you need to check uh, that it's uh, safe uh, for eating. Uh, um, so we, have, we are seeing that there is many companies in the space of uh, plant-based meat and seafood, uh, but because they are mostly on uh, ground meat, um, when it comes to fibrous meat, it's very difficult. Uh, there is technology that is called uh, high and low moisture extrusion, uh, which works quite well uh, with soy and with gluten, but when it comes to using the ingredients, you're quite limited and you can replicate very well, for example, uh, pieces of um, um, chicken strips. Um, uh, we have some uh, companies already on the market uh, working with this uh, kind of extrusion, while on, when it comes to, uh, when it comes to uh, other ingredients like uh, pea, rice, hemp, and we want to try new proteins, they don't work well uh, with the uh, extrusion because uh, these machines go to up to 140 degrees and what happens is that uh, the material um, gets uh, denaturated. So the natural aromas are lost and uh, what we can uh, do now is trying to use uh, new pastes uh, like this one. We are trying to, uh, maybe you can show you if you get uh, nearer. This paste uh, doesn't have the texture of uh, meat. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can try to, to touch it and you will see it doesn't look like meat. Um, the, the thing is we use these micro extrusions so that uh, we align the fibers internally to, the, um, to, the, um, to each one of the filaments. All right? So we don't use the printer because uh, it's just it's cool and we can create some uh, strange uh, you know, uh, shapes. We use this machine and we will scale with another machine that is bigger because with this technology here at room temperature we are able to substitute uh, the traditional extrusion technique and try to do new things that uh, are not on the market yet. All right? So this is uh, the first time we are testing this uh, new version, which is the plant-based stick 2.0. And what we are uh, trying to demonstrate here is that uh, we can get before summer uh, to get the taste. All right? So um, I'll What's the shelf life, or how do you preserve it? Like if you wanted to send it to like yes. a rural area somewhere where no meat isn't available, would it be able to get to those places safely? Is that any yes. other option, you know, future-wise for places that don't have availability with meat? Could that get there safely, shelf life-wise, preservation-wise? Yes, so we have done some preliminary tests in terms of pasteurization, sterilization, high pressures or new techniques as well. Um, because it's very important to create some uh, products that can be fresh and can be prepared in, uh, in the restaurant directly, you know, for the consumers, for the clients, and some others that can be uh, packaged, right? Mm. So for the packaging, what we are doing is uh, trying to get the right uh, formulation first. And once we get the formulation, we want to do the test and see the shelf life. We have tested already once. Um, uh, we have tested already once here in Spain, our, uh, this formulation actually, and it tasted more than 28 days in fridge without uh, problems because we had tested 
uh, many of them in a scientific manner with the professional um, research center. So once we get to the right, uh, right version, we will, uh, of course, uh, um, do this again and try to sterilize or use different techniques and uh, um, prepare some packaging. In the future, we would like to uh, not only have this uh, um, in Europe, we want to export, um, maybe not ourselves, but maybe give the uh, manufacturers tools in terms of technology. So we want to of uh, an area uh, which is in need of proteins. There is an area like Europe and the States uh, where we eat too much protein, actually. We eat uh, around four times more uh, meat than uh, the necessary. And uh, we don't have this problem of essential amino acids. Uh, the problem is uh, in other countries, uh, maybe especially in rural areas of the planet, according to the FAO, uh, there is uh, some areas, of course, where there is no, not this good access to um, all the amino acids. Uh, so we want to try to demonstrate that uh, other countries can use their, um, their proteins from their lands and try to transform this into a variety of products so that with a variety of ingredients ingredients you can get a variety of textures. All right, so this is the idea and we also trying to connect uh, with some space agencies uh, because in the future they would like to do some uh, cool work uh, for future space travels or some tests preliminary in the International Space Station. So uh, we are in talks so that we can start uh, uh, demonstrating that this can work uh, in microgravity and this can be sent in form of powder to space so that is lighter, right? But then uh, you can have tanks of water in space and you can have ingredients in a powder form and uh, select those ingredients so that you can have uh, at the end, one product is customized for the space traveler. And here now, uh, we started the, the printing process. Uh, this is uh, similar to the first uh, that we have cooked here. And um, you can see that it's composed of uh, microfilaments. And these microfilaments are aligned now on an orthogonal manner, which is a very simple manner that allows us to create uh, these uh, preliminary versions, right? In uh, the next uh, months, we are trying to use instead different patterns internally so that the micro pattern can resemble much more a piece of meat. So right, uh, it's already like um, with a texture that is, it can be in a range of certain uh, So right, uh, it's already like um, with a texture that is, it can be in a range of certain uh, whole muscle cuts, but when it comes to uh, adapting, um, if you want, you can see from, uh, from behind, from near, and you will see that, uh, if you approach, you will see that uh, there is uh, microfilaments, and uh, what you can see is that we can uh, manage uh, uh, the speed and the flow to make it uh, faster or slower. In this specific case, we are doing a, a prototype of uh, one that can be done with only one ingredient. But when it comes to having uh, more complex uh, shapes, we can use uh, more capsules. So you can use, uh, for example, uh, two more capsules, um, two capsules instead of one, and create, as I said, uh, fat and uh, meat and uh, muscle in different parts. You were trying to make bigger machines. Would the bigger machines be able to mm -hmm. recreate the microfibers like this one? Yes, the bigger machines are not working uh, with one filament at a time, but we want to simultaneously extrude much uh, more material, right? But this allows us uh, to test new formulations every day. So we talk with uh, top chefs and we talk with uh, food engineers um, in our team, but also outside of our team. And we can uh, learn from uh, you in, uh, uh, in the chef schools, or we can uh, learn also from uh, restaurants and future owners of uh, hotels. They want to be, for example, zero emission uh, 
um, in their own um, you know, creations in terms of restaurants, scatterings, etc. Uh, they want to have alternatives and they want to use machines that are, um, in this case, for example, it's uh, much more efficient than a piece of meat. One kilo of, uh, one kilo of bee stick is, uh, in this specific case, one kilo of bee stick uh, will take uh, 25 kilos of uh, feed for the cow and um, 15,000 liters of water each uh, single kilo, uh, which means that uh, it's necessary to find an alternative. And for example, the land use associated uh, with um, uh, meat and uh, animal protein sector uh, takes uh, around 83% of the total land worldwide, the total arable land worldwide, which means uh, it's uh, unsustainable uh, for the governments as well because they are trying to use uh, they're, um, they're trying to use their um, resources better. So as you can see here, what we are trying to do uh, is uh, creating these uh, microfibers so that each one of them together are connected and uh, there is an interconnected porosity so that we can do some, uh, create also experimental work where we can uh, um, embed new material inside because it's uh, microporous, right? Um, we have tested already uh, we are testing already uh, the next uh, products in terms of rec recreating pork uh, because of, uh, as you see, the suine flu fever in China and because the Ministry of Health uh, said in 2016 they're trying to cut meat consumption there and they would like to avoid to import uh, that much uh, meat from uh, Brazil or from uh, the US and given the trade war as well, uh, there is uh, an instability and alternative proteins can feel this, uh, this problem as well and try to uh, give the other countries uh, that now need to import meat um, from Europe, from, uh, and from all America, well, a sustainable manner and also because uh, um, the mid middle class in China is growing and the consumption of meat is always more demanded. Uh, there is an increase of 5% annually in terms of uh, meat consumption worldwide. Um, which means actually the consumption of meat is growing. And also we are going to be around uh, 10 billion um, people on the planet um, by 2050, so we need uh, solutions. Uh, we have uh, worked here in Europe uh, with the EAT food so that uh, we are, for example, trying to push this innovation forward and trying uh, at the level of startups uh, to uh, push this transition because the big corporate in the space are a bit uh, slower uh, in terms of uh, moving uh, to the alternative protein sector and startups are moving the needle, right? So we are trying to steer the system from the inside and provide the meat producers with a way uh, to um, instead produce uh, meat alternatives themselves, right? Um, so this, we believe this one is a, techn a technique that uh, uh, is novel. Uh, there is other techniques that are, going, uh, that are, going, uh, that are being studied already. Uh, for example, in, uh, we have in Europe, in uh, Holland, uh, we have uh, great universities that are working with different technologies to align the uh, proteins. And uh, one of these technologies, these ones, we believe that the big uh, corporates are uh, interested, the big companies, the big producers are interested in, uh, well, having, uh, jumping into the, into the meat, uh, alternative meat sector. We are seeing that uh, uh, Burger King has launched uh, in the US, uh, the Impossible Burgers. We have seen that McDonald's have done agreements with Beyond Meat in uh, Canada. Cost-wise, because you were mentioning the Beyond Burger and like all these plant-based burgers, usually they're very, very expensive, like because since they're the alternative, like how, yes. how would this? So it's a very important question because now there is a limited, uh, limited version and in the price is uh, almost uh, well, it's in, here in Spain, for example, we can find it at double price of uh, the normal uh, beef burgers. Uh, what we have done uh, here, this one is costing $1.5 uh, per 50 grams, which is around $3 uh, per 100 grams, which is around $30 per, kilos, per kilo. But we do that by selecting ingredients at very small scale, which means once uh, we can get the right providers and buy in bulk, uh, we can go down uh, with the with the price. Take into account that this, uh, well, you need to, you save time because you, you move directly from the plant-based protein to the animal in between. So of course, in terms of entropy, in terms of energy consumption, 
uh, it's uh, more efficient. Uh, the system, uh, the full so that uh, this transition uh, can go to the, well, to producing in large scale uh, these products at very the, in the market are not many, so the competitors are not many yet. But now the big uh, players are jumping on board. Yeah, they are jumping on the plant-based uh, meat sector even uh, harder, and uh, the big machinery uh, and distributors and producers, all of them are uh, moving because they don't want to see another. The big uh, milk producers, some of them have gone bankrupt because they didn't, they were not. The meat companies are uh, updating faster because they believe that this is uh, an opportunity. Innovation. We have great innovation here, and for example, here in Spain, we are lucky that we have a We are located now. Uh, well, we have access to great uh, culture in terms of gastronomy. Uh, and not uh, moving forward in uh, new things like alternative uh, products. Not even normal meat, right? So we in, uh, in supermarkets uh, find. which are not uh, anyways looking like uh, they, the meat that, that we see on some, uh, some movies like with the cows in, uh, you know, in the fields uh, free to move. In, in specific case of uh, intensive farming, we need a, a transition uh, because what happens now is that uh, we need an alternative um, to well, animal, uh, animal um, um, practices in terms, for example, of all, always... Uh, even innovating in health systems so that it's safer for, uh, for, uh, for us as well. Uh, for example, we have seen in China the uh, swine flu fever, but we have seen that this uh, coronavirus but we have seen that this uh, coronavirus has started from uh, wild markets. So uh, meat is uh, a sector that is uh, moving forward but still we, we see many problems associated with the meat uh, sector and there is need for uh, alternatives, right? Uh, here we, we want to collaborate with the um, food system and try to make this transition uh, go further. So now if uh, you like, we finish to print this. We'll take around uh, maybe three more minutes and then uh, we will move from the printer to the pan and then we eat it uh, directly. And as you see, this can be done in around uh, 20 minutes completely. We will detach this uh, um, from, the, from the plate now and once it's uh, finished. And we will uh, eat this. This is fresh. Um, it's been done uh, right now. So we see that uh, there is also uh, possibilities for chefs uh, to create new things, which means, uh, uh, for example, things that uh, have the texture of meat but maybe uh, have the taste of, uh, of uh, plants or fungi, you know. Uh, or on the other side, you can have the texture of meat on something that looks like, uh, like uh, a, a mushroom, for example, right? So we, we think that customization, customization and personalization here uh, is a strong added value. We think that food system is becoming always more uh, sustainable, but also more uh, um, customized. Um, we are also trying to uh, collaborate with research institutes uh, in terms of uh, um, health, for example. So we have talked with hospitals that work with the young patients and with old patients. 
For the older patients, they would like control on the texture so that they can have uh, uh, controls on uh, so there's, there's wallowing problems, the dysphagia problems, right? And so they want to quantify and use customized technologies, um, not only to create meat, but for example also uh, to try to uh, control the texture on a very quanti quantified way. And the young patients, they would like to have, for example, uh, active principles in uh, some medicines in the hospitals. Uh, maybe very young patients, they don't want to get it, in, they would not like uh, to get it in, uh, in liquid form, they would prefer uh, to have it in a form of something with a texture that is more app appetizable, right? So that um, this, uh, this young, for example, uh, consumers also can get something that is the ingredients inside or nutritional values and then in the form instead of uh, a normal protein mixture it can be in the form of uh, something resembling meat or uh, seafood. Um, we are trying, for example, uh, bacon as well. Uh, we are trying to have bacon where we have uh, fat on one side and muscular on another side, but we are still at the beginning. Um, and we are trying to do things that uh, are not uh, yet there on the market. We are not trying to do uh, meatballs and, um, and burgers. Um, we are trying to do a new thing. Um, because we start with a very different perspective. We start from uh, bioengineering. Um, and in our team, we always said, well, we started with the stick, but, uh, but uh, we want to move to the, to the new, uh, to new um, technologies. Everyone wants bacon. No? Everyone wants bacon. Yeah, bacon is uh, one very special, <laughs> special food. And also we have, uh, well, in, in the form of non-processed food, um, there is many other parts like... Uh, uh, we've seen salmon, or we, or we are seeing that the tuna is demanded always uh, more, um, or uh, you know, uh, even uh, can be. Uh, even uh, can be food from traditional from one area and try to replicate it. Uh, at the beginning, try to mimic it and then create new things so that it doesn't need to be exactly the same. What we have seen is that uh, we have already changed uh, our food uh, from, uh, from uh, meat. Uh, we have uh, moved to hot dogs, burgers and uh, nuggets, right? So we think that uh, this transition is going to happen very quickly and we want to be part of this transition. Um, so we, I always make a joke. Um, I always say to my team that um, um, Kennedy said, we don't go to the moon because it's easy. We do the, go to the moon because it's hard. So we say to the team, uh, we, we do the stick because it's, uh, not because it's easy, but because it's hard, because it's uh, the holy grail, right? So we got lucky that the first test we got uh, to something that had the texture, and then from there we moved to the appearance. So now it's uh, missing one last step, which is creating, uh, well, the actual uh, uh, cut that you would see when you have uh, a fillet, for example. Um, so now we will see that the last part is going to be more fun because it's uh, going to create some uh, curves and we can control this uh, uh, with some uh, three-dimensional models so that uh, we can send, for example, in the future uh, from our mobile phone, uh, we can send and connect this uh, as an EIoT system and in the future have uh, not only, um, um, well, we can have customized food at home in the, in the next future. We, this is not our priority at the beginning. We are trying to uh, create like a very, you know, the most advanced that we can. For example, like, like if it was a Tesla Roadster, right? We are trying to create the most uh, complex that we can and then trying to scale this so that it can be affordable uh, to the whole uh, society. So what do you think? It's amazing. Something new or? Very cool. Yeah, at least, <laughs> at least we, we agree it's something new, so. <laughs> right, so I think that uh, we are trying to cook it uh, with olive oil, like uh, traditionally here in Spain. Um, of course, uh, you can cook it uh, meat in different ways. So we are talking to meat experts, so restaurants that work uh, um, with uh, new thing, new well, exotic meat as well. We're trying to get some inputs from them. As you can see, um, the filaments create uh, some uh, perimeter around the areas that we want to print, and then we create um, uh, this uh, structure that is internal. Uh, we create this uh, in a way that uh, when you see in the microscope, uh, you can have 
these microfilaments and uh, these microfilaments together, they distribute the force so that when, when you try to cut it, the filaments help each other, right? Like if it was a net, like a fishing net. Right, so, um, and then uh, we, uh, we think that we are going to create always uh, bigger pieces, so uh, maybe already next year we have a, a printer that can create, as we hope, um, in a, with different nozzles at the same time, very complex things. But also next year we want to build a pilot plant, which is like a more industrial scale, and uh, we can have it, uh, um, well, we're trying to have uh, 50 kilograms per hour so that it's uh, standard, that it's already filling the need of some producers. Um, where, are, where are you from? You feel that uh, in your countries there is a, uh, this is um, too hype, or do you feel that this is uh, something that uh, people will accept? Because uh, this depends on the country as well. I'm from the United States, and I assume that if you can make it taste good, there'll be a market. Hmm? Mm -hmm. All right. And somebody here is from Spain? No. Not in this group, all right. No, 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 no. So, well, Italy and Spain have one, uh, one advantage in terms of, uh, um, of uh, culinary. Um, on the culinary side, uh, Bloomberg Health Index in 2019 will uh, put uh, Spain first and Italy second on the healthiest country worldwide. Um, because we have uh, Mediterranean ingredients, uh, we can use these ingredients and uh, use them in our uh, you know, system in the form of uh, capsules or in the future in the form of uh, bigger quantities, right? You said you're Italian, right? So when you get an Italian grandmother to accept this, that's when you know you've made it. Yeah, yeah, it's true. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think in some cases, uh, people already don't distinguish very well, but uh, this depends on the, on the people. If somebody is very used to meat, because this is doesn't uh, replicate the taste yet, um, if you don't put spice and you eat it raw, of course, we still have some work to do on the taste, but uh, this is... Uh, what, um, well, what has been called the most realistic for now, to date, the most realistic uh, plant-based steak, right? Um, so now, as you see, uh, the last uh, areas are being completed in the form of uh, some curves. And now we, we, we detach it from the plate and we move it to the, to the pan here. Do you feel this is already warm? Yes? So this time we can have with some uh, barbecue sauce so that... Uh, it's, uh, of course, uh, getting into the, the mood of uh, barbecue. We, uh, once, uh, once we incorporate uh, the good taste there, um, in terms of uh, trying to replicate the beef stick even uh, raw, which it will be in uh, around summer, then we can uh, have this uh, well, cooked in different forms. This is uh, just uh, one uh, test we're doing today. We can have it with any sauce and see what happens. Um, Right, so what do you feel? What would you do? If you were able to do anything in the world uh, looking like uh, meat or seafood, what would be your, uh, your choice? Uh, why go beef? Yeah, yeah. probably. Sure. Or some very fatty tuna. <laughs> All right. Or a salmon tuna. So you yeah. feel the difficulties in having uh, the, uh, the fat incorporated in the right way? Yeah. If you were able to do anything in the world uh, looking like uh, meat or seafood, what would be your, uh, your choice? Uh, why go beef? Yeah, yeah. probably. Sure. Or some very fatty tuna. <laughs> All right. Or a salmon tuna. So you yeah. feel the difficulties in having uh, the, uh, the fat incorporated in the right way? Yeah. Yes. All right. So we are, uh, in this specific version, we are collaborating with a startup here in Barcelona today. Uh, this is uh, done with uh, some uh, emulsion done by Cubic Foods, which is a collaborator, and we are trying to incorporate their fats, as all their fats as well. And uh, this one is uh, with the rapeseed oil. So we try to avoid, for example, uh, using the same mixtures that you can find in supermarkets. So normally you use uh, coconut oil, canola oil, but we want to innovate and try different fats. So for example, this one is uh, rapeseed, and of course, it will incorporate some uh, olive oil because it's uh, porous. And maybe you think that there is some technology here that can help. Maybe, I don't know, uh, vacuum uh, technology can help. Like vacuum sealer with oil, so it absorbs it or something like that? Yeah, I think uh, we can collaborate with the chef and try to absorb the oil inside the, inside the structure. Mm -hmm. Now it's uh, becoming more and more uh, looking like a stick. So if yeah. you approach here, you, you can see, if you want to get uh, near as well, you can see that uh, this is doing the last uh, layers. Yeah.
So now it's going to do the last uh, one minute or so, and it will uh, move away from uh, the plate. So we will detach it and uh, prepare the pan so we cook it and we, we cut it again. Then uh, uh, we will, uh, well, we are trying to uh, cook it again as if it was normal meat, but if you want to innovate, just tell me how you would do and we can try new things. So it's up to you. Now it's doing the last layer, so it's uh, moving away from there and uh, we can uh, cook it with, uh, with um, olive oil if you like or just tell me and uh, we can uh, test a new thing. Can it be frozen as well? We didn't test the freezing yet, but because it's uh, proteins that already are not novel food, right? right. Uh, the good thing about this is that uh, when you're not using novel foods, there is already many studies um, uh, being done so you can already know beforehand uh, what are the ingredients that can be uh, frozen properly or not. So now the machine has stopped and we can uh, detach it. Oh yes, but we can keep it, uh, we can keep it for uh, cooking. I have already some uh, water with salty that can help. So I will detach this. Uh, uh, do you want to, uh, do you want to s uh, switch on the pan already? It's on. All right, so we'll detach this from here uh, with some water and we will put that uh, onto the pan. All right, so let me uh, get a spatula. Um, all right, so this spatula is uh, very big. Maybe a metallic spatula can be better. If not, I will detach it with this. It's no problem. All right, so I will uh, get uh, paper here and detach it. All right, so let me see. So, is the pan ready? Yes. All right. So, we are using the spatula here. All right. So, as you can see already, uh, before cooking, it has already the texture of a piece of meat. Um, so um, if, I, if I will pull strong, uh, it, will be, um, it will be already similar to uh, raw meat. Although these are new materials, so we can control uh, before cooking and after cooking if we prefer to have it uh, uh, stiffer or um, off or instead uh, more soft. Right, so let's see. Like we have seen in different, uh, in different uh, burgers. So it's becoming a little bit more similar in terms of, uh, of color. I will add a little bit of uh, oil here. And so we absorb a little bit more than before. So we check if it absorbs some of that. It's looking like uh, it gets uh, the oil inside. Um, so we see on the other side as well. And now I think uh, we can uh, test it already. So first, all 
What do you think? It's a, it's something new, or uh, have you seen something like this before? No. <laughs> never. Yeah, so this is a small piece because we have used uh, s uh, small um, capsules, uh, but when it come, becomes um, bigger capsules in uh, the next uh, weeks, we're trying to do thick, uh, thicker pork pieces. Pork chop or something? Well, uh, pork would be, would be very interesting because uh, we, really, we, we really see that the Asia is uh, in need of pork and uh, thicker also looks, uh, looks the next step, right? All right, so what do you feel? Should we take this away already? Yes, I think you should take it out. Yeah. Hmm? Yes. Do you agree? Yeah. All right. Medium rare. So why don't we cook it? Uh, we we eat this one uh, already when it's uh, still uh, warm. Yeah. Sure. Let's do it. All right. So feel free to cut and try. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> yeah. And please tell me what you feel uh, if you cut. If you th if you think it's uh, something interesting or. So what do you feel? It tastes better when it's warm. Yeah. Yeah. warm. Better when it's warm, like normal meat? Yeah, the texture is there. Oh, wow. Like normal meat? Mm -hmm. It's actually it's the same texture. Amazing. I don't, know if, I don't know if it's amazing, but something to start with. So now we, uh, well, when it's warm and it gets some more oil, we feel that it's uh, more uh, authentic. Yes, uh, it I don't is. know what you... Yes, yeah. It is, actually. Yeah, it's Do you think that maybe making it uh, thicker would be... Will be interesting yeah. or yeah. what? Will be very interesting. Mm -hmm. Integrating some pieces of fat, ribbons of fat. Yeah. Integrating some fat, maybe um, like a separated part with only fat, yeah. like yeah. a bacon or like yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. like a st like a steak on the on the on the pictures, right? Yes. 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 So this one we have incorporated the fat inside each one of the filament. We are trying to get it absorbed, right? Uh, but actually, uh, we are. Trying Yeah, definitely. All right, so uh, take this uh, as you wish. Um, this is uh, the mixture that uh, we are using now. Mm -hmm. And tell me, does it have the same texture of uh, when it's cooked or? Uh, Not at all. It feels like. This feels more like a pate. Yeah, like a pate. Right. No, no worries. You can uh, feel it uh, like. I can uh, use my hands. Yes, with your hands. <laughs> If they're clean, because <laughs> we are going to eat this, right? Yes, they're clean. All right. <laughs> we are going to eat this, right? Yes, they're clean. All right. <laughs> so. Yeah, like a pet thing. Right. No, no worries. You can uh, feel it uh, like. I can uh, use my hands. <laughs> yes, with your hands. If, if they're clean, because we are going to eat this, right? Yes, they're clean. All right. <laughs> so, try to feel it as if it were uh, working on um, with the uh, materials for uh, like. Um, um, building, uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, like, like cements and clay, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. So try to uh, maybe get this uh, and fill it without uh, creating uh, air bubbles okay. so that we don't have, uh, uh, we don't break the filament. Mm -hmm. Although uh, normally we, we, we feel that this material is uh, good enough to work at uh, room temperature and uh, also it doesn't create... Um, do you, you have to have fill these manually now? You'd have a machine do this, right? Yeah, now we fill this manually because mm -hmm. uh, we are moving to a bigger capsule, so uh, we want to find a, a machine that does it automatically. But we may lose some uh, jobs. Yeah, we can have people do it manually. <laughs> 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 no, right. So this, uh, for sure, it's something that uh, can be done uh, much faster uh, with machines.
So we don't want to break the knife, so don't make it uh, too stiff, please. Because uh, it's thick. <laughs> right, so this material uh, is composed of uh, more than 20% of protein. It's composed of uh, around this one, 12.5% of fat. So as you can understand, this is much less uh, than a burger, right? In a burger, you can find maybe 20% of fat, so you see that this is a little bit uh, drier. And when you try to replicate, for example, a chicken, you even uh, use less fat. Uh, when you try to replicate uh, steak, maybe we can move up to 15%. Uh, we are even studying to incorporate uh, fibers that they are missing in the Western diet, for example, and trying to have uh, these uh, fibers uh, substitute uh, the fat or any sugar that uh, we might want to add in the future. But actually, this one is composed of uh, pea protein, rice protein, a algae fibers. Um, there is a natural aroma. Um, we selected beef brasato natural aroma um, that is uh, fermented, and then we use the beetroot juice extract. Uh, so this is. How do you actually? Uh, so this is. How do you actually go about creating the paste? Yeah. So we we mix the paste. Uh, with the uh, patented technology, so we have patented three main parts, which mm -hmm. is uh, creating the formulation. Formulation doesn't need to be with specific ingredients. It's uh, the property of the formulation that work with this microextrusion. Then the processing uh, can work with a printer or can work with bigger machines, uh, and the product. So we patented the three things, and we have uh, IP, which means uh, intellectual property, which uh, uh, we developed uh, to make the paste uh, being... Uh, um, in this particular form so that it can be extruded without uh, any, any problem. So that uh, before, it's, uh, before you, you, can you push it a little bit uh, harder so it becomes a little bit more dense? So we're trying to have this uh, paste becoming like, uh, like this, right? With the with texture. So what we, you see here, this is our version 2.0, which is very simple inside. But you see there is a uh, microfilaments here, right? So what uh, we are trying to create is the same structure that you would see in uh, muscular fibers. Normally, muscles are composed of uh, filaments, uh, which then are composed of uh, fascia, which means uh, it's a hierarchical structure. Uh, and we use a technology that is called biomimetic because uh, we assemble the fibers um, uh, where uh, each one of these filaments try to replicate uh, the bundles of uh, muscular fibers that we have uh, in mammals, for example, in the case of uh, cow, for example. But also, then we have uh, a structure that is uh, nano, nano uh, metric, which means inside each one of these filaments, inch, inside each one of these filaments uh, that are micro, uh, the alternative protein, in this case, uh, the plant-based protein that we used, are ordered in the same direction of the extrusion. So, for example, uh, when you see here some, uh, some uh, shape, these fibers, uh, inside of each one of them, the alternative proteins are ordered as if they were the intracellular uh, proteins that you can find in uh, muscular fibers. So actin and myosin, for example, in muscle, what, you, what we try to do is order them at the nano level inside each one. muscle, what, you, what we try to do is order them at the nano level inside each one of the filaments, at the micro level, uh, creating this uh, uh, structure. And uh, in this case, for example, um, afterwards we create also what is the macro level, so the appearance, uh, so the, people, the person uh, can, uh, can see that it resembles a little bit uh, like a steak already. All right? So should we try to print a new piece, maybe? Or uh, we can uh, try to create a new structure, so I can, um, I can tell you about uh, the models that we, have, uh, that we have done. We have created one uh, small stick at the beginning, then we move to this one which is uh, thicker and uh, can incorporate more uh, fat inside. So you see that uh, if you push harder, it becomes a little bit more uh, chewy. So the next step is creating something like um, what you call here in Spain chuleton. I don't know, 
maybe a sirloin or a mm -hmm. bigger pieces and try to replicate what is the, the fat part, which is uh, much more complex. Um, we are trying to use uh, less uh, the number of ingredients as uh, little as possible because you see that uh, the future um, uh, we use the, the technology in the food industry, but we make, uh, especially in, um, in air, we know very well in Europe, for example, that uh, we do tests to make uh, sure that all the ingredients that we use are coming from uh, selected sources, for example, in our startup. Uh, we are trying to make things uh, um, at the beginning a little bit more uh, um, premium selected materials, and in the future try to scale this. Oh, no. All right. Do you have any complications? Yes, I can show you. Yes, please. We're trying to remove the air bubbles, but then. Yes, so uh, what, you, what you do here is uh, you get the paste inside and you try to avoid the bubbles. Right. So what you do normally is uh, you try to push this, but then there is a trick, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if I get the nozzle here, do we have a nozzle maybe? Um, we can have uh, this uh, more dense. So let me see if I get a, a nozzle. We are using here a very small nozzle, which is uh, less than uh, less than half a millimeter in diameter, right? So we will uh, put here, and we see now that we can create a filament, all right? So if we get uh, also a um, the white part that uh, is uh, useful for the plunger, all right? Thank you very much. So what we are doing now is uh, maybe getting a a plunger, and we can see that. Uh, we make this uh, more dense and prepare this uh, uh, for the printer, right? So you see that this, uh, this material is very special um, because it can come out uh, from this, uh, but it can come out also from a smaller nozzle, all right? So for the smaller nozzle that we will use now, we need to push a little bit harder because the machine can push uh, harder than ourselves, so, right? So now we will uh, add the nozzle so that uh, we see that uh, each one of the filaments that we create are microfilaments. All right, let me see. Yeah, you see that uh, my hand is shaking because it's a uh, material that is very stiff, mm -hmm. right? Although uh, this material can be extruded at room temperature and this material is uh, softer before processing it, after processing, what we get is uh, we change the properties. So now we prepare this so that we can uh, start um, a round of uh, printing as well. Do you have questions in terms of, uh, is anybody of you flexitarian maybe? Do you know what um, is flexitarianism? I'm vegetarian, um, have been for years. This is interesting for me. I think probably the hardest part is people who choose not to eat meat, eating something that looks like meat is a little contradictory in a way. But I think it's interesting to see that there's innovative technology. Definitely from when I started being vegetarian four years ago to now, there's a lot more innovations, which I think is pretty cool. But Do you think that if uh, more and more omnivores try to eat... Yeah, uh, I think that would be something more for people who have a hard time switching over to a plant-based diet. They you know, find it more difficult. So seeing options that look similar to meat, um, makes the transition a lot, a lot easier. Um, so I think that would probably be, you know, more in, of a In general, part. I think the future is moving towards more plant-based, so, so yeah. Why do you think it's moving to plant-based? Um, because people don't like meat or because... Uh, um, just in terms of how you were saying before, in terms of sustainability, I think, I mean, there's a lot more conscious now about how the world moves forward, and there's been a lot of problems environmentally, so now having this in the future, I, I do believe it, it can be a trend, like a big thing. What, I, what I've uh, seen on the news, which is very spectacular in a way, is that 95% uh, of uh, the Impossible Burger, for example, clients, they were not uh, vegan nor vegetarian. Mm -hmm. It's a curiosity. People want to know what it's like. They say, oh, it tastes like meat, it looks like meat. Why don't we just try it as an alternative? But I'm saying it's very intriguing because uh, it's so new. Four years ago, none of this existed. So yes, but this is a trend that you think is staying, or you feel this is a no. trend that is just uh, disappearing? No, no, no it's going to stay. It's gonna stay. We, we see the big ones moving in this uh, direction, so we believe this is a, a choice they are doing. And we are seeing also uh, farmers that are interested in see how they can update maybe uh, new technologies or even uh, try new ingredients in their, uh, in their systems, in their lands. Um, 
So we have seen this happening, uh, for example, uh, before with uh, milk, and now there is an explosion of uh, varieties, right? Soy milk, almond milk, um, well, there is uh, oat milk, and we are seeing now that this might happen uh, very soon, sooner than expected. Of course, uh, our startup is working on this uh, for the last uh, couple of years, so we already, um, well, we believe very, very much that uh, the compound annual growth rate of the sector is growing at around uh, 28, 30 percent uh, in the next, uh, before 2030, so in the next uh, 10 years, right? Uh, 2030 has been set as a milestone for many um, governments in terms of uh, choosing how we move forward and how we get there, but if we really are uh, um, that many millions, uh, billions of people more on the planet, we will need a transition. What we think is that is more uh, efficient and uh, normal in terms of calories, for example, you need uh, more than 50 times uh, more land if you are trying to get the same calories uh, from cows, for example. Uh, for, for pork, for example, and chicken, it's a little bit less, but still, uh, in terms of uh, efficiency, uh, greenhouse gas emissions associated with uh, uh, the meat uh, industry are around 14.5, um, you see, if you calculate with direct and indirect emissions. So if you calculate, for example, the transportation associated with that and so on, which is even more than all the means of transportation combined. So if you get the plane, the... ...is impacting uh, at the same level of transportation. And this was unexpected when... So we are, we are seeing it that the whole sector, in terms of trying to be more... and we need to be prepared. Um, we are seeing, for example, in Spain, to make uh, this stage yet, still, uh, but... Uh, ...is the next step in trying to do the uh, what looks... So now what we are uh, seeing is that we so that we can see that Uh, if we do with the new machines, it can be much uh, faster. So we range in this case, uh, if you do this in 15 minutes, the cost can be of this piece will be around $1 because it's around uh, 30 grams maybe. Uh, maybe less in this specific case, so of course it will be uh, half a dollar because maybe this one it can be 15 grams. Um, but when you put uh, many extruders at the same time, you can have this uh, duplicated. We think that uh, we want to scale up this uh, not with the printers it's, uh, themselves, but uh, the bigger machines, because uh, actually um, we think that uh, if we help the very fast, and we are trying to work on the long term, associating with the top players in each field, uh, so, for example, uh, we are a startup in this sector. It's not very difficult to find investments, for example, in this sector. Um, so to create this, uh, and if you are able to create something new, you can get the right investment, not only from uh, Silicon Valley, but you can also find, uh, uh, well, investors uh, in Asia open uh, to these uh, investors in the Middle East, because, for example, in, uh, in the Middle East or uh, Saudi Arabia or uh, areas in that uh, sense, 
what happens is that uh, something like this uh, would look like uh, spectacular. What, what about the machine? How did you go about creating like the whole, the whole thing? <laughs> so the machine is uh, created um, on purpose. It means it's customized. Mm -hmm. um, what happens is that uh, uh, we create here the, the extruders. And this machine was adapted from a previous machine, which was a bioprinter, actually, uh, which means I was using myself this machine uh, here in Barcelona to create uh, um, bone tissue, uh, to create uh, muscle tissue, cartilage, and previously I've been working on skin regeneration. So the way uh, to use these uh, natural polymers um, has been uh, translated to the machine. Uh, this machine is the smaller version we have, and now we, have, um, we are looking forward to have this uh, on the market, which means uh, provide this uh, to the restaurants, uh, hotels, catering, um, and uh, this is, will be like an espresso model, right? Uh, you see with the capsules and an espresso, um, looking like a machine. Uh, but then in the next future, we want to have instead big machines that we provide to the big manufacturers. So a different scale, we want to create technology that can serve um, to different players. Um, if you, you think we'll see it in restaurants? Well, we have already, we have already in talks with restaurants, so we feel that uh, you can have in a restaurant as a demo for people to try very, very soon, uh, maybe the next uh, month. Uh, then before summer, I would like to have a partnership with uh, one of the top restaurants uh, here in the Mediterranean area and uh, have that in uh, first uh, in uh, small, uh, let's say, um, um, evenings and try with uh, small groups and then scale this up with a new version of the machine. For chefs like you, I feel that this needs to be very robust and uh, something that you can use without uh, being afraid of damaging it, right? So maybe you would like to see less cables and maybe a machine that is uh, easier to clean. So we are working towards this because we understand that the user is uh, going to be not uh, ourselves, but somebody that is uh, working in a kitchen. So here, for example, we, today we are in a professional kitchen environment and we do this on purpose so that we can demonstrate that uh, doesn't these machines can be in the future bigger or smaller and depending on the size can be much uh, more uh, efficient than this um, we feel do you feel that uh, size like this uh, might fit if it's uh, faster for example uh, uh, I feel the size is good and also maybe I was thinking like maybe we have preset options where you don't have to configure it or anything just you just press the button and it goes so you would like to have maybe a model for a bacon, one for a steak, yeah. Yeah, and what else would you like to have uh, in a restaurant in the next year? If we were to do this uh, with you in, uh, as uh, a... Maybe some type of fish, uh, chicken. a steak, and yeah, and chicken. All right, so Can chicken... Well, we, we provide the technology. So okay. actually we focus on the large scale, so sure. working with the big players, but because we have this machine already, uh, being developed uh, in a new form uh, which is more robust and so we think that it can be useful uh, for research mostly, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, I told you that it can be researched but uh, it can be done uh, for space agencies but uh, for hospitals as well, for uh, a, um, for example uh, top restaurants, uh, why not in the future for uh, new projects as well where you want to add an extra layer of customization. So some people would like to maybe closed models and some people would like to have a uh, more uh, open system that they can uh, hack, okay. right? So in terms of uh, vegetarianism, uh, we in Spain here, we calculate, for example, if I'm correct, can be around five, seven percent maybe vegetarians, uh, but then there and 30% uh, can be between 20 and 40% which uh, actually uh, for example that uh, um, many people do it for uh, with more protein uh, no fat or less fat diet and they want to uh, re recover and then we have we are seeing people doing this uh, for a planet 